Welcome today as we celebrate Pentecost. Our our hymns this morning will include from all from the Lutheran service book, our, our new hymnal number five hundred and two, Holy Spirit, the dove sent from heaven. Hymn number four hundred and ninety-seven, Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord, and hymn number six hundred and fifty, Holy Spirit ever dwelling. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Pentecost celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the Church, and the gift of faith and salvation for all nations. That's pretty important to us since none of us are Jewish, right? Well, except for Pastor Good. Just a little bit. And we all like to live Gentile lives, even Pastor Gooden. Seen him eating the eating the bacon, the pork, and and uh, and other Gentile things. Peter and the other apostles don't fully understand yet, but speaking in other languages is well, it's it's just the start, but it's a big thing. It's a huge. Actually, our own church, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, went through this transition from German. Maybe I should back up a little bit. Here's a, here's a little story about the Lutheran Church and spreading the gospel. During the Reformation, the new understanding of salvation, known as Lutheranism, or that was called Lutheranism, spread all over Europe, even into Italy and the Baltic regions of southeastern Europe. Lutheran churches were started all over with the excitement of the rediscovered freedom of the gospel. Then the Roman Catholic Church went through its own reformation and various ways and reasons forced the Lutherans back north to Germany and Scandinavia, parts of Germany. That was pretty much where they were isolated until the Western Hemisphere was discovered and Germans and Swedes and Finns and Norwegians and Danes started coming over to America, to the new world of freedom and opportunity. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod started as a group from Saxony in German, Germany, who left in hopes of finding freedom to practice their understanding of true Lutheranism. While in Germany, the regional and kingdoms, different governments, were forcing the Lutherans and the German Reformed Church, similar to Presbyterians here, to merge into one, throwing aside all the doctrines and things they had that were not in common. Our Lutherans from Saxony had already made some contacts with other Lutherans in the New World and hoped to join them in a united Lutheran Church once they got settled. But, as you probably know, our church can be a bit hmm, particular about doctrine, and we couldn't find enough agreement with other Lutheran churches, so for the most part they, they didn't join together, and there were lots of Lutheran churches in America. One of the other things that kept them, these churches apart, was language. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, was the German Church. There was also a Danish Church, and a Swedish Church, and a Norwegian, and English. All separate church bodies, denominations. So, how did all these churches grow? Everybody was having big families. And nobody left their churches unless they were forced to do so. so one of the big ways and reasons that all churches grew was through appropriation. I don't think we're going to have much luck with that here, at least not until we reach some new families. And let's not tell them about that part of our plan right away. Second, they had people, we had missionaries waiting at the docks, welcoming Germans and Lutherans getting in and getting them into the church right away. 
And there were other Lutheran missionaries traveling from town to town. They were asking if there were any Germans, any Lutherans, which is kind of what happened right here, especially in Cooley City, where Pastor Einerbach was going door to door as a salesman and would also ask if, there, if the family was Lutherans. Now this, Pastor Einerbach was after the church gave up German and was speaking English, because, particularly because during the World Wars, speaking German made us suspect. So, you could say that the Holy Spirit was at work to help the Lutheran Church at that time, even though some people thought that we would lose our doctrine if we stopped speaking German. Well, maybe we have a little bit. But, if we hadn't changed to English, we would be a really small church today. None of us would be here, since I'm pretty sure that even I wouldn't have learned fluent German, even for church. But you could say that we have basically translated our Lutheran faith from German to English. Most of our hymns and our worship, is the music is very Germanic. Northern European. So, how are we going to grow our church today? First, we have to be more concerned about telling, telling others about Jesus than growing our church. Otherwise, they will think that we just want them to help us pay our bills, and they won't join us. Uh, second, obviously, it's a little late to grow by procreation. And I think you've all, you know, most of your children have gone to other churches or left the church completely. So, we're, if we're going to have any success there, we're going to have to become more like the Amish. Third, is, uh, there aren't many Germans and Scandinavians immigrating to the United States anymore. And the ones who are, have already left the church. I did try... Uh, looking for Lutherans in the Mehau when I, when I was planting the church over there, or trying to plant a church there, and I found there are many former Lutherans, but they were either not interested at all in church, or they had already found another church that they were happy with. So, where does that leave us? We're going to have to pray for the Holy Spirit to help us have another Pentecost. The world is changing. You know that. It's changing too fast, too much. But God's church has been through lots of changes, and the church has found the way to change and to speak to each age the good news in a way that they have heard and responded. It isn't going to work very well for us or me to go downtown and start off with the same words that Peter used. Men of Judea and Jerusalem, you killed Jesus. No, we don't live in Judea or Jerusalem, and the people around here did not see Jesus die on the cross 50 days ago. So their understanding of sin has changed. We, just, we can't just read Peter's speech word for word. But the people here do feel the brokenness of sin. And we, they need a translator to help them understand what they are feeling, who can tell them about Jesus in a way that they can understand today. To, to translate the timeless message of repentance and forgiveness of sins into our modern, local dialect. And the Holy Spirit will help us to speak those words that will cut the people today to the heart so that they too will repent and receive him and the eternal gift that he brings. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And through the Holy Spirit, he speaks in the language of each person's heart, not just the English or German or Danish, but to the language of their tongue time and, and their local dialect to the very words of their, of their heart, that touch their heart, that cut their heart.
because his sacrifice and his gift are for all time and all places. And the Holy Spirit is living in you. You have received it in your baptism. So you get to be part of sharing this wonderful gift with others. And sharing the gift is also a wonderful gift. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.